I think we're live. Hello, hello. <laughs> Is it Monday already? Already? <laughs> wow, it just seems like we were making turkeys like a couple days ago because it was only going to be Thursday. Wow. I don't know. You guys having this like flyaway dry hair thing going, it's making me crazy. It's just like, <laughs> I don't even need the balloon to do it. Just got like so much static. We're so dry around here. How are you all? I see some of you have rain. We sure need some rain here. I think it's been like over 200 days since we've had rain here in Las Vegas. So it's crazy dry. It's crazy dry. We're feeling it. Then, you you know, you got the heaters on in the house. So hello. How are you all? Welcome. Welcome. We do this every Monday at 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, of course. And over here <laughs> over here if you're watching this on the replay you won't well you'll still see the chat you just won't be able to type in the chat because the chat is live with me right now so um come on over on mondays at 1 p.m pacific that's 4 p.m eastern time and we can chat together live like this um but anyway today's topic is going to be about cross posting, cross listing your items. And I'm going to show you how I do that. And I actually just took the, I, I've i sold on Facebook Marketplace for years, just, you know, locally. I've always listed stuff that I didn't want to ship on Facebook Marketplace, but Facebook Marketplace, or Facebook, I should say, is getting into the e-commerce game. Now, I'm a little squeamish. I actually am a lot squeamish. I do not trust Facebook. I don't trust them. <laughs> um, I really worry for me personally because, I mean, all of my marketing and connections, um, both personal and business, are, are, are on Facebook. Like, I've got a lot going on Facebook. And I don't want to take a chance of being suspended or my account restricted or something like that because of something to do with marketplace. Not that I would do anything wrong or illegal or immoral, but you know, sometimes things get interpreted or somebody turns, you know, they report you for something and something can go wonky. And I'm just, so for me, that's my squeamishness. That's my hesitation. Um, the other part was giving them access to my bank account. And uh, I just resolved that by setting up a separate bank account just for the Facebook marketplace stuff just to like keep them out of my main business. I just don't trust Facebook. Uh, they're too big for their britches, in my opinion. Uh, I think, uh, you know, these sites have a lot of power <laughs> over our lives and, and, and how things go out there. So I'm just, that's my, that's my insecurity with Facebook Marketplace. Now, that being said, I did go ahead and list some things on Facebook Marketplace, and I've had two sales and one inquiry. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, I'm seeing a lot of people have success with it. So I did want to show you um, how easy it is to cross list things there. I'm going to go through that today. Yeah, see, I don't know if it's, see, there's so many unknowns, Does you know, if, if Facebook has like Vero. Now, Vero is eBay's, I used to know what that's different, verified, oh, what does it stand for? Something registered owner, something, something registered owner. So basically the, the owner of a brand or a trademark can come in and say, Hey, that's, that's, they don't have the rights to sell that. And then they can have your listing taken down. I'm going to assume that Facebook plays under those rules as well. Yeah. So I just, you know, I've seen how posting on just Facebook timelines work where somebody can report your post and then it gets hidden and all kinds of stuff can happen. And that's, 
you know, there's no, there's no appeal process. There's, I mean, there is, but there isn't, if you know what I mean. Um, there's no customer support. There's like, there's no like real people behind Facebook that we have access to. So I'm stepping into it cautiously, cautiously, cautiously. Yes. But that being said, I don't know. I'm going to try a few things over this little holiday time. See how it goes because it's free. It's and the and the buyers for things over twenty five dollars in certain categories get free shipping. So they're really pushing this and it's having a pretty big effect on sales. So. Yeah, well, that's what do we do? <laughs> what do we do? Yeah, so I'm very protective of my business and my reputation on everything and so yeah yeah well it is what it is All right okay but we are going into the last a uh, few weeks of the year that are insanely good for online sellers historically 2020 could have different surprises for us who knows <laughs> i'm not counting on anything this year but um some of you follow Lindy. Um, I just lost Lindy's last name. Is it Lindy Glenn? Is that her last name? Oh my goodness. That was really bad. Anyway, she does a live right before mine on Mondays and she just started a death pile December challenge. So I just wanted to give you guys that little heads up. If um, Now she sells a lot of new product um, like um, wholesale, liquidated goods, health and beauty type stuff, completely opposite of what I sell. Um, but if any of you are into that, go check out her her the video she did today about her challenge. It's really good stuff. But I also want to address hitting those, what I like to call the profit piles, hard and heavy. Like the next couple of weeks, like if you have tons of stuff, you don't need to go out and go shop you need to list, 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 because this is the time where you are going to make crazy sales. Now I get it. I get it. The shopping is the fun part. It is. I get it. I do it because I got to keep making videos for y'all. <laughs> Sometimes I shop when I shouldn't be shopping, but it's part of my business model too, is to keep creating those videos. So we'll get it listed at some point if I can just keep my, my listers working um having some issues there you know one of them um i just i one of them quit with no notice and then um I, I, the one that i hired in her place got exposed to cousin rona and so he played it safe until all was well and didn't didn't come back which is great i appreciated that so it's just been kind of like trying to keep things churning but yeah it's the fun that we have you had six sales in the week i know you're talking to melissa six sales in the week and half of your store was opened so much fun that is fun it is fun sales are wins and you've heard me talk about it before because my business coach tells me keep a track of your wins feed your brain with all the things that you succeed at on a daily basis like everything that you accomplish he says write it down i'm really bad about that but it's one of the reasons too like beyond just having the tada list you know which is the same concept checking off your accomplishments but also give yourself credit for all the wins feed your brain with that positivity and every sale that cha-ching you guys know that I, it sends dopamines and it's like cha-ching oh you get that little euphoric feeling for a moment it's like a slot machine just went off and paid you right uh so we want to keep more of that going just sold the lid to a desert rose teapot yeah yeah that happens absolutely when you keep hello yes 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 beth a when you keep listing, you will get sales. You know what? I've been doing this for 22 years and that concept right there holds true. 
Um, that's why I say consistency. And if you only have, say, one day a week that you can create listings, schedule them out, schedule them or put them in draft mode and just go in every day and, and launch one or two of them. It keeps that consistency going with the eBay algorithm and it helps your buyers want to keep coming back. So if somebody saves you as a favorite seller, if there's nothing worse than having somebody keep coming back and they don't find any new merchandise in your store, right? It'd be like you going to your favorite store and nothing ever changes. It's like you walk in and it's like, it's the same shelves. It's the same merchandise. It's the same pricing. You know, we have to keep, keep give people a reason to keep coming back to our stores and or our listings if you don't have a store. So that's a really important concept. Um, now, real quick, this question came up in the Facebook group and I wanted to address it because this we go over this over and over and over again. And so I'm gonna bring it to you straight from the horse's mouth, uh, USPS mouth, um, about flat rate boxes and envelopes. Okay, my neighbors, I don't know if you can hear the bumping and the banging and the, all of that going on. My neighbors are putting up Christmas lights with this big ladder and they're making a big to-do over it, which is fine, except that it causes my little monsters to bark, which you're probably hearing for sure in the background. Um, so I may have to yell at some dogs to just hush. <laughs> Because the kids aren't home today, so I can't lock them up with the kids during the show. So anyway, back to USPS. Um, so a flat rate, because you've seen this in my shipping videos, I will use a flat rate box and I will use it as regular priority rate. And there is a rule that says you can do this. As long as it is modified, you can do this. Now. There's so many different post offices around the country and employees who may not be up to speed with this rule, but their terminology is modified. So I scratch out the words, the barcodes, everything. I print the postage online and I schedule a pickup or I drop it off in the bulk drop off. I never, ever, ever go to a counter. It seems like the counter people don't understand the rules correctly, but it's all good because here there is a page on the USPS website that I'm going to show you and you can print this out and take it with you. So let me just share my screen. I don't know. Can you guys read that? Do I need to like blow it up a little bit? Let me blow it up. Um, let's see. No, there we go. All right. Of course, now it wants to scroll across. Screen. Oh, it's okay. We can do this. All right. Also, just FYI, we are going to have a real live postman here next week. Let me just say that real quick. Next Monday show, I will have a Joey Bing 22 He is a real life postman who also sells on eBay. So be sure you come back in the community tab. We've been taking the questions. So if you see a question someone's asked and uh, you have the same question, give it a like and we make sure that we get to those questions. All right. So you're going to, you're going to be able to interact with him live here on the show. And we can go over this with him as well, just to verify. But let me show this again. So you can see, dun, 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 dun. Um, they're talking about tape. They're talking about dun, 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 dun. if an FRE or FRB, which is a flat rate express or is that or envelope or box? Duh, I knew that is presented at the office of mailing and the customer has manipulated or reconstructed it. The container is accepted using weight and zone, not the flat rate price. See it. It's right there on the USPS site. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> So it's, yes, bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> yeah, so it's right there. It's right there. Um, so when I'm giving you this advice, it's not just something I like pulled out of the air. It's right there on the USPS site. 
Now, that being said, I don't use the flat rate materials very often that don't go flat rate. I think the one that I mainly use is the one that is made for um, games. So it's the game box, which is such a unique size. Um, so I do use that and I use it for regular priority if that's going to be a lesser price. So otherwise, I can generally find a box that that fits. Uh-oh, Deborah. Let's see what's going on. Let's what let's let's deal with this. Totally disheartened. Sold a very large piece of expensive art. I used the eBay method for shipping. The item shipped, then two weeks later, a charge for extra shipping charges came out of my eBay account. Now, when you say you used the eBay method for shipping, did you put in the exact dimensions and weight of the package when you were creating the label? And um, if so, you should not have been charged extra. But I can see sometimes where if we don't get those measurements quite right on an oversized item, and then eBay or not eBay, but the post office then comes, you know, and says, oh, well, it went through our stuff and it was bigger than that. They do come back and, and they can ding you. Yes, you did. Well, then I would challenge it. I would challenge it for sure. I'm a, I'm a challenger. I, I don't just take this stuff lying down. Yeah, I would, uh, I would appeal that and I would fight it, I fight it go and say, no, I put in the exact weight and measurements of the package when I mailed it. Um, did you mail it FedEx or um, USPS? I tend to do all of my larger package packages FedEx home. I don't do them USPS and I don't even do them FedEx ground or UPS ground. And the reason for that is I learned this from a FedEx guy that was delivering a whole bunch of stuff for me um, that the FedEx home drivers are contractors. They lease their vehicles and they it, basically they're, they're, they're buying a license from FedEx to be able to deliver under the FedEx name. Okay. So they're responsible if something is broken or lost or any of that. So I go with FedEx home because FedEx ground, UPS ground, they are employees. They are probably not making the greatest of money. They may get disgruntled. We've all seen the, uh, the viral videos of, you know, the throwing it over the gate and all of that. So that's, that's the little differentiation there. So you used FedEx ground and you put in the demand. Yeah. So I would go, I would contact eBay customer support and I would say, this is incorrect. And I have heard a lot of sellers saying they're getting these bigger FedEx charges added to their bill. Um, so you guys challenge that, challenge it, challenge it, challenge it. Your husband ships items. Whoops, where'd it go? Ships items daily and is feeling validated right now. Pri RE priority boxes. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Um, so, yeah, just challenge it. Uh, go over and you tell, you know, they've got the info. I know it's hard to prove, um, but they have to prove that it was bigger than what you said it was. So that like, and here's the thing, not that I'm telling you to go to a court of law. But think about it in terms of a court of law. They would have the burden of proof before just arbitrarily charging you more. They would have to prove that it was bigger. So if they can't prove it, they need to refund you that difference. Yep. So Julia had a $1 charge today for relisted and automatic. It was for a gallery plus option. Yeah, they sneak those in you. You have to be careful of those. Um, I've I've had that happen too. I know there. I'm thinking because I know there's a way to go into all your listings and find the listings that have added. 
feature fees, but just be careful when you're making something go live, the fees are always listed down at the bottom for you to double check. And if it comes up with a fee like a dollar, um, there's something amiss. And yeah, it is usually that gallery plus that they get you on. Yep. Is there a way to know when that is going to happen? When what's going to happen? When your item's going to be relisted? Or, or like I said, just double check those fees um, when you're doing the original listing. But once the items are listed, there is a way to go and filter them. I just can't remember what it is. Let me see. Let me see if there's a way. Yeah, I don't. I'm looking over at my active listings right now and I'm seeing if there's a way. And there's not a way. There's lots of ways to filter, but that's not one of them. I, I You know what? I'll post it over on the Facebook group um, if I remember how I did that. Because I went in and, and looked at all mine. So Gallery Plus, um, here, I'll show you what that looks like. Oh, I'll have to resume one of my listings to do this. Okay, let me. Okay, so Gallery Plus is this little checkbox right here. Boom. Now watch. Now, I don't know if this will happen. But see, there's just that one little check mark. If I go down to list this, let's see if it's going to charge me a fee. Yeah, see, so it wasn't included. It this is included free in this category. So some categories are free and some are not. Um, let me, let me, I'm going to go find an item where it's not free so I can show you what that looks like. Dun, 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 dun. Stand by. I know I must have some because I think like in clothing, it's not. I think I have some clothing listings here I can play with. Okay, let's see. Oh, talk amongst yourselves as I figure this out. Okay, I found one. All right, I'm gonna show you. This is on a dress. This is in this is in draft mode. So I'm not finished here yet. But see how I checked. And what it did show me is that it if this is checked, they do show you what the fee is right here. Um, so as soon as I uncheck that, that fee goes away. Hopefully. Maybe by the time I get down there. But let me just leave it checked for a moment and show you when you get down to the end of your listing. Da, 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 da. See right here, it's there. It's going to show you that you're getting charged for a fee. So you have time to go back up there and take that off. Boom. And now when I come down here, it should be gone. Yes. It's gone. So yeah, I'm just going to keep saving that as a draft. Okay. So yeah, just be careful of those fees. You Manual relisting is generally not going to be feasible if you have a lot of items on a rotation because it's good till canceled. So it's all automatic with eBay. Used to be you could do a 30-day listing and review your listings every 30 days, but they took that away last year. It's been a year now. Um, so, but there is a way to go in and bulk edit and find those. Or look at your um, look at your invoice from the previous month and find those fees you were charged. It'll pull up, it'll show you which items it was charged on. So that you can go in and correct those items. Yeah. As far <clears throat> as far as items that you had in auction format, there, I mean, there is a relist automatically, but I don't do that either, Tiger Purple. I don't relist auctions. I sometimes will run an auction a second week, maybe reduce the starting price a little bit. But nine times out of 10, I just go and change it to a fixed price, which is a good till cancel. Yeah. 
What shipping program do I use for non eBay items? Um, if it's not something that I sent a PayPal invoice on, I will use pirate ship, pirate ship.com. Arg. <laughs> They have really good pricing and uh, they have really, they're much easier. Even on my PayPal invoices, I have to go use them for international orders because PayPal is just a pain in the butt. Um, so yeah, we use pirate ship. Oh, Etsy, you can, yes, Etsy, you can manually relist, relist. Yep. That's right. Yep. 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 Um, let's see. I don't want to miss any questions. I don't list with any options with fees. Yeah. And it's, it's not unheard of that eBay sneak something in there. I know on my one account, I actually just put my, my other account on time away because I can't deal with all the glitches they're throwing at me right now. Um, when I got changed to managed payments, I I was on business policies. I got off of business policies. I bulk edited all of my listings. Um, and then they went and added automatic. What did they add? They added international returns. I don't offer international returns. <laughs> and so I'm seriously rethinking even offering international on that account because it's not real high end items. It's not anything that buyers need all that confidence to buy. Um, so I'm just reassessing things, but I'm concentrating on my utterly good stuff store right now because tis the season and that's the store that's going to bring in the good sales. And then I'll deal with that other one when I get to it. Ah, I don't know if pirate ship offers media mail or not. I don't use media mail. I really, I am not an advocate of media mail because it tends to lead to unhappy customers, even though they select it, even though you try to warn them that it's going to take longer. I find that they're just not happy with how long it takes. Um, so in that case, trying to use a flat rate, option or a regional box might be a better option or pirate ship has the cubic shipping which is a box in a bag so sometimes some blah, blah, sometimes that can be a really good option exactly kelly's um peek into the past it, there there isn't a way to manually relist on ebay anymore it is all good till canceled yes 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 okay Give me a show over in the comments. Um, how many of you are cross listing to at least one site? At least one. So for me, I'm cross listing. I mean, I'm my main, my main baby is eBay. My e-baby. It's my e-baby. <laughs> um, so I got eBay, and from eBay, I cross list to Etsy. Poshmark, now Facebook Marketplace. Actually, I did Facebook Marketplace before, um, just as local pickup, and now I'm doing it. And I'm doing some shipping, um, and then I also cross list on Cherish.com that you've heard me talk about, and that's C H A I R I S H, like a chair, chair ish. Yeah. So we've got lots of nope, 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 not anymore. Some of you are. Tell me how many, how many, give me a number, how many sites you're cross listing to. Show me a number. I gotta get that that Instagram thing go. I really, I I I actually this this past week, I don't know if any of you noticed it, but I did change my Instagram to the niche lady. And I kind of fixed up my branding a little bit. That was my first dipping my toe into Instagram a little more because I hear good things about Instagram. It's like, oh, my daughter is a total Instagram uh, person. Um, and she wants me to hire her, but she wants me to pay her $300 a month to manage my Instagram, which I'm not going to do. I love her, but I'm not going to do that. 
<laughs> no can do. All right. So I'm seeing one, two, one, two, one, two, buckle my shoe. <laughs> and that's fine. You want to master eBay first. That's totally fine. Totally fine. I, I focus, focus, focus is absolute key. I mean, I, I absolutely recommend you get really good at one site to where, okay. And this goes for, if you're adding an eBay store too. Get really good and solid with your first thing and then expand and grow. Yeah. Two different accounts, Etsy for handmade, eBay for reseller. Gotcha. You're brand new and very nervous. Is there a limited amount of items I'll be allowed to list as a beginner? Probably. On eBay, there is. They do limit you at first, but it's super easy to get. Those they'll give you more and more as you show that you kind of get it, you kind of know what you're doing, and you can move forward. Yeah. So once you get, I think, I don't know, there's no set thing, it seems like. It seems like it seems like eBay will give some people 10 listings and other people 50 listings. And so I can't say what they're gonna give you. Can't say. Yeah, it's crazy. Okay, I'm going to show you how I cross list um, because I I probably wouldn't do it without the tool that I use. So I'll just say that up front. <coughs> Excuse me. Isn't it funny how we feel bad about coughing nowadays? It's like coughing is so taboo. I feel guilty when I cough. Oh, I don't want to cough. All right, um, I'm going over here to get back to the right screen that I wanted to be in. Okay. There we go. Okay. So hold on. I meant to pull this up too. Just to show you. Stand by. Log in. I am logged in. There we go. Okay. All right. Okay. This is going to sound really funny. I'm going to share this tool with you um, and I'm not telling you like go sign up or anything, but I'm saying if you choose to check them out, there is a code down in my description that will give you 30% off. Okay. So if you're going to do it, you might as well get a discount and yeah, they do give me a little bit of that as an affiliate. So I'll just be right up front. So I appreciate you using the code. But I wouldn't have been an affiliate for them if they didn't pass on a discount to you. That's one of my criteria. So it's got to be something in it for you. All right. So what I use to cross post is list perfectly. And if one of my mods over there could grab that code and put it in the chat, because I honestly, I think it's the niche lady, but <laughs> I forget. <laughs> My brain, I, we've got a lot of stuff going on here at home right now. And I got to tell you, my brain has been on overload and I haven't been sleeping well and I definitely have not been eating well. So um, forgive me for fumbling some words. It's going to happen. All right. This is what the list perfectly page looks like. It is very user friendly. Um, they have these walkthrough guides, like step by step on everything. Um, you can actually list right here. You can add a product right here on list perfectly. And you can create your listing here and then push it out to your different sites. But I don't do that because I am so proficient at eBay, number one. And number two, I use other people to help me create my my drafts and they don't have an option to have somebody else use a different sign in like eBay does. eBay has the multi um, multi user access thing right now where you don't have to give out your personal information for somebody to come into your eBay account and work in your eBay account, which is awesome. Um, Thank you, Melissa. It is the niche lady. There it is. I thought so. It's the niche. I couldn't remember if the the was on the front of it, but yeah. My screen looks blurry. Oh no. I hope, I hope it's not like way for everyone. Um, but anyway, this is not where I go to create the listing, but I did want to show it to you 
for those of you who would like to have a place to create and store your listings, because one of the perks of doing the listings here on List Perfectly itself is that when something sells on one site, you can go in and easily take it off all the other places you have it listed. Um, so I actually might start importing my listings onto List Perfectly itself. I'm just such a creature of habit and I started on eBay first. So it's one of those things I just haven't gotten to. Um, but you can see all the info is there, your description, all the stuff you need to put in here. And they've got everything here because you need it for Etsy, you need it for Poshmark. Actually, I'm going to show you all the different sites. They just sites that I don't even do. But there you go. You check it out, you save it, push it out, all that. You can put your own little custom notes in here, like where it is. It breaks down your, you know, if you want to put your, some of your accounting, your cost of goods, your fees, shipping. I mean, there's lots of really good stuff here that I'm not even utilizing. I probably should be. So it is so much easier when drafting to list perfectly. I really then should just get my butt in gear and start doing it. But then it's hard because again, I'd have to just give other people this login which I'll figure it out. They're working on that, by the way. These girls, in fact, I need to have them on here. Would you guys like that? Would you like me to get the ladies who actually created this website? I can get them on here. I'm pretty sure they'd be down for an interview. And then you could ask questions directly to them. But um, they are e-commerce sellers themselves. And they created this to solve their own problem and then found that there was a demand from others and it just kind of snowballed from there. There's different price levels. You'll have to go in and go check out which price level works best for you. It has to do with, you know, how many things cross over. But why is my phone ringing? It's probably, I have the, I have the uh, internet guy coming right after the show. But of course, they're trying to call me to verify my appointment, which is so silly text me guys. Okay. <laughs> well, let me just show you what it looks like to cross post something. So I'm in my active listings and, and you'll see, and this will happen on any of the sites you're on. You have the same ability to cross post from any of the sites where you have listings. You can cross list to the other sites. So we'll take this little guy and you just push that Here's the places you can cross post to. Grails, which I think somebody, correct me if I'm wrong, it's like vintage. I think it has somebody does vintage t-shirts there. I don't know what else Grailed does. Oh yeah, Mercari. A lot of you like Mercari. Poshmark, of course. Tradez, Etsy, eBay's there. Facebook, Depop, Kitizen, and Shopify. And they're adding more. I've got my request in for Cherish, of course. <laughs> I want Cherish added really bad because I do my Cherish cross-posting differently, which I'm going to show you. Is it blurry for everybody? It shouldn't. It shouldn't be blurry. Let me know. Men's clothing is grailed. Okay. I just... I just know uh, Katie from, from Katie and Vicky post her, her t-shirts there. Yeah. It's blurry for everyone. Oh, that's really weird. I don't know why it's blurry, except maybe they're messing with my internet, which would, I could see how they would do that. Okay. Some of you have no, some of you have yes. I don't know. It's just this moon phase I think we're in. Just a moon phase. Okay. So in this case, I want to cross post this to Poshmark, Etsy, and Facebook Marketplace. So I'm going to show you all three. So I've selected those three. I hit copy. And what it's going to do is start generating those listings. And boom, here it goes. It's going to give me the Poshmark one first. It's giving me all my pictures. Now, this is another reason, you guys, that I do my pictures in square mode for eBay, which is 
actually preferred and you'll notice eBay has a it has a workaround and they fill in the space with with white but square the one to one ratio photos are the best and those cross list over the best all right so we go down here it's got my title sometimes i'll have to take some stuff out because there's a shorter title for poshmark than there is for ebay it brought my description in I need to just depict my category, which is, oh, he's an accent and he's decor. Actually, was vase in there? I think, yeah, we'll put vase. Okay, I just say one size. You don't really need the size for anything that's not clothing. He's not new with tags. Um, don't think we knew the brand. Oh, he is, he's World Market. So I might, now you see with, it's letting me keep it. Sometimes it won't it won't stick, but it did that time. Now with Poshmark, you can choose two colors, but he's pretty much one color. But we'll just call him white. And somebody might think it's cream. So we'll put those two colors in. Original price. Now it says required on Poshmark. Most of the time, you just put zero. And I do bump up the price just a little bit on Poshmark because you guys that sell on Poshmark know you're doing those deals, you're doing the closet clear outs, you're making offers that cause you to pay more of the shipping. So I just bump up my price a little bit so that I can do that. And then it shows you your earnings and boom, tells you where do you want to list this sends it out to all the social media. You're gonna get a warning on breakables. Yep, I'm aware. <laughs> Thank you, Poshmark, and boom. Okay, so our listing is now listed on Poshmark. Now we're over to Etsy. Here's what Etsy looks like. Again, it brought over, you're gonna get this little warning about the image. It's never been a problem. Don't worry about it. Go ahead and list. Um, it got my title. You have to fill in the who made it another company. Oh, you know what? I actually can't list this Yes, thank you dogs. I can't list this one on Etsy anybody know why I can't list this on Etsy Let's see see if you caught me Who caught me and can tell me why I can't list this on Etsy as I sip my sugary soda that I shouldn't be drinking right now. It's not vintage. Yes. Well, if I was going to list this on Etsy, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you since I'm already here. Another company, it's a finished product. And if it was vintage, I would say before 2001, or if I knew the era, I would put it in. You put what the item is, it's an owl base. It's going to give you your options for where to put it. I would have probably put it in vases. And then of course, Etsy's got all of its little things you fill out. Now, Joni, you're listing directly on list perfectly. So is all of this stuff then filled in if you create the listing on list perfectly? That could be, that could be really cool if that's the case. I would like that. I would like that a lot. Um, Etsy, you got some tags. You got, you know, you come down here. I leave the price the same to go over to Etsy. I do not do free shipping on Etsy. I do calculated and it's already imported all my info here. It tells me how much it's going to be. And then I would list, but I'm not going to do that. It does. Oh, see that. That would be a time saver. I just might have to rethink things. Okay. All right, so let's leave that because I can't list that. Now, I don't know, those of you who are using list perfectly, are you getting this little oopsie thing when you try to list a Facebook marketplace? Because um, I'm getting this every time, but I just say, okay, and there it is. And it, it's not a problem. <laughs> um, but you can see it brought over my pictures. It brought over my title. It brought over my price. I'm good with that price. Although if I make it 25 right now, here's a little psychology here. 
If I make it 25, the customer sees free shipping. If I were to leave it at 20, the customer would have to pay shipping, which could be a deterrent. So our category, and this is where it's gotten a little tricky with Facebook Marketplace. Because if I was to go in to, let's say, home and kitchen, home decor, decorative accents, you'll see it's a little bit limited. I think vase is, yeah, it's in here. So I'm okay. But if the item didn't fit in any of those I might have an issue um, and I'd have to come up with another category in order for it to be offered, um, which I've done. I think there's even like a, a miscellaneous category. Um, color is white. Where's white? There you are. And material is ceramic. We've already got our description. I don't do the product tags. I don't know about you guys. Um, next. Um, location, Las Vegas. Now, I don't want to do shipping only. I'll do shipping and local. Why not? And don't do the free shipping thing. You have to select use a free shipping label. So let me just tell you how it is in doing this. How many people are creating probably hundreds of listings right now with this use a free shipping label? Now, we know not everything is going to sell by the end of the year. So what they've now done is going into January when they start charging and they start profiting, um, they're going to have a bounty of listings there that they're going to start making money off of. And that's why they're doing this promo. They are making it like a no brainer to use Facebook marketplace to list some stuff. So, Yes, you can do handmade, you can do crafting items, you can do crafting supplies that are new, but you can't just do products like this little owl vase unless it's vintage. Yeah. Facebook doesn't pay you until the item arrives at the buyer. Neither does Poshmark, neither does Cherish, and I'm pretty sure neither does Mercari, right? I mean, that's pretty, it's becoming pretty standard. Okay, let me finish this one up and show you. So your options there are use your own shipping label or use a free shipping label, okay? Package will and they just want you to put in, I, I know this is gonna be a one to two pound because I've already measured it. I mean, I've already weighed it. I go next. I don't know what, Give me a second because I don't know what the next screen shows and I don't want to like show my address and everything. So let me just make sure it allows you if you want to list it in other group, you can do that. Let me. OK, it didn't do it didn't go anywhere else, but here you go. It shows it right here. It now it says under review, uh, which doesn't take very long. But you can also see look at the list perfectly little emblem is there. You can cross post from your Facebook marketplace listings. And I actually had two sales already. These two items sold and are being shipped. So, yep. What do you think? Pretty cool, huh? Oh, let me show you what I do now back over on in my active. This is how I keep track. So as I'm going, let's say I'm going to cross list like five things. As I'm going, I check them off. Okay. And then at the end, I go up and I edit and I add to my custom field that it's cross posted. I only did one. So I'm going to show you what I put in there. I would just put the places that I cross posted it to. I, I did posh, right? Yeah. Boom. So now I can keep track that that is cross listed. And so I know which items are and which items aren't. That's what I do. Cool. But normally I'm doing like you know, at least five at a time. My goal is five a day. Cross post to those other sites. And then I just go in and I bulk um, update the custom field. And then what that looks like is I'll show you some that I've already done. See here? It shows me where those are cross-posted. Boom, 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 boom.
boom, 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 just like that. So I can keep track. If it sells on one site, will it show sold on all the other sites? No, that is something that you, you have to manually do. So if I sell something, I go in and I go take it. I have to go in and take it off the other sites, um, which isn't, it's, it's not a big deal. And like I, you know, like we just pointed out, if you store your inventory over on list perfectly, you go in there and you, you still have to manually go in there and hit the button, but then it'll take it off those other sites which is really cool. I know I'm like talking myself into starting to create my listings right there on list perfectly. I know I should just do it. I have to figure out how to import them all in there. That's my holdup is how to import them. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, vintage Violet. I must've missed like the first part of what you said there. Oh, you sold two items and you have not been paid yet. See, mine showed it. Is it telling you to print the label? Because, I mean, have you shipped? Oh, that's what you're saying. I put the tracking number in wrong and I cannot change it on Facebook Marketplace. Well, well yeah, see, that's, that's my concern is that there's no customer support. That's my biggest concern. So I am not going to get myself dependent on that stream of income. I will probably play around with it for the next couple of weeks. Um, and then I probably won't, I won't use it too heavily unless they improve some of the customer support features and protections. I mean, the thing about Facebook, and this is where I'm torn. The thing about Facebook is they know everything about us. They know what's going to be appealing. They know what we hover on. They know what, you know, ads we click on. Like they know the merchandise to put in front of you, right? How many of you, uh, come on, how many of you have bought something because you're like going through your feed and there's a little ad for something that you just can't live without? Ah, me, hello. In fact, I count on that sometimes. I will I will click a like on an ad or something if I want to see more companies that have the same sort of thing because I know that's what they're going to do. Um, the listings have to be done individually to cross list from eBay to say Facebook Marketplace. Looks like there was more to that question too, was there? Looks like an addendum, or is that a question? No, the free shipping is through. It should be through the end of the year. That's what I what I heard. I don't know. Was it only through this weekend? I don't. Know. I'm I'm just I'm just delving into it a little bit. Let me see. Four days of unlimited free shipping. Oh, you're right. Okay, so it's telling me I can add it to some of my listings, but it's like, yeah, no, they can pay for the tree. Okay, so I'll probably use the the choose my own label unless there are shipping rates, which, okay, it's the seller fees are waived until the end of the year. Okay, okay, that makes sense. They might bring back the free shipping thing. If it was a huge success, they might bring it back. Like, if they end it and now go a week where the sales kind of slide off because they don't have that free shipping, I bet they'll bring it back because that would be smart. <laughs> Thriftastic thrifter. Yeah, I just put it in my custom field. I can see where with list perfectly, if I actually bring my stuff over there and keep track, I, I can't really show you what it looks like. I can show you what the empty catalog looks like here. Let me, so this is what the page looks like. Um, this would be filled with products. Yeah. And it would tell you which marketplaces you've had it on. 
I think I'm going to have to do this. I just need to figure out how to import all my items into here easily. Because as you saw, I have over a thousand items listed. So, yes. What is espresso? What is espresso? Jersey Gypsy Corner Store. Hmm. I like finding out about new things. Yeah, they'll they'll run they'll run the promos again. It also ends on all platforms with one button. Thank you, Jenny. I'm glad you're using it that way um, because I wasn't sure. Oh yeah, I um I signed up for List Perfectly. I want to say about a year ago. About a year ago. And they didn't have nearly as many channels then to cross post to um, as they do now. And um, I decided I was going to like, you know what? I, you know, I started with the, with the lowest um, level of their, of their product line. And I was like, yeah, you know, I could do this. I don't need this. I could do this on my own. And I found that either one I just didn't get to it or two, it was so time consuming that I didn't get very many things cross posted. So I ended up signing back up again and I've got the top version um, just because I want everything possible. And I mean, it, I, it's some, um, I think the top, top level is correct me if I'm wrong. Somebody is $79 a month. So it's, you know, it's it's not something I say do if you're a newbie with five things listed. You know, this is if you have a steady business now, you're ready to expand because the savings you have on number one, your time is worth the $79. And, and there's lower levels. You don't have to get the top level like me. There are lower levels. I think there's a $29 level. Think about it. $29. That's less than $1 a day. So get yourself, you know, five or six things cross posted a day, I guarantee you're going to have the sales that you wouldn't have had otherwise, that more than make up for that expense. And that's the thing. Look at my phone is ringing again. So you have over 1100 listings on this perfectly. And it took three solid days to get all the listings there. But so, well, Joni, you just might have to talk me through it. You might have to talk me through it. So you can keep up to 2,500 in, there you go. And Joni, how many, how many sales do you get off of those other sites that you're cross posting to per month? I know I'm putting you on the spot here. Because I think what people get caught up in is looking at the price of what something costs, not realizing how much spending that money is going to make you. That's the thing. We all spend money on stuff and we have no guarantees of how much it's actually going to bring in the long run. So I just want a bunch of you over there to say, yes, it more than pays for itself. Yes, yes, yes. Tons. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's like me having um, the booth. I'm just going to say this. I have a space at an antique mall that I pay rent on. Okay. And I pay hundreds of dollars of rent on that space. And I put product in there that I've paid money for. So, but spending that money makes me money because I sell enough stuff that paying that rent, I, I get a stream of sales I wouldn't have otherwise. Yeah, exactly. It takes money to make money. That is absolutely correct. And I am not one to go out and say, uh, go pay for things. Like that's not my way. My way is if you, if you can do it for free, do it. Um, but I have been completely sold on this perfectly. And you guys that have been in my group group know that I tried another competitor to this product and, um, it wasn't, it wasn't good. <laughs> it wasn't good. Uh, because those guys who were programming that product don't understand 
the mindset of an e-commerce seller. And that is the big advantage with this program is the list perfectly girls, gals, women. I don't know. Some people get offended by the word girls. I just I say that lovingly. Um, they know what they're doing. Like they know what we need. And that's the really cool thing about it. And I didn't mean to make this like a whole, you know, advertisement for list perfectly, but um, I'm just so enamored with this program and what it's been able to do for my business. And apparently I'm not even using it to its full capacity, which I need to get my butt in gear and do, because I can only imagine how many more sales I'm going to have when I do that. Holy moly. And just, I know one of the fears is like, what if I sell it on two marketplaces at the same time? Well, let me tell you what happened to me this morning. I printed out my packing slip for my Etsy sale, um, which yes, I do. I don't do them for eBay sales, but I, I will do it for Etsy sales just to keep myself organized. And I went over to print out, um, not print out, but to go write down my list of things I needed to go ship today. And what do you know, the same item sold on eBay. So here's my advice. Cancel the one that's not eBay. Don't cancel the eBay sale. Canceling the eBay sale will definitely hurt you if you get too many of those. Okay. But every once in a while it happens. Like that's the first time that has happened to me all year long. It just doesn't happen. And it was my fault because I didn't immediately go over and cancel it off the other sites. I let it ride overnight. And that's what happened. Yep. Um, I just got them, Liz. I just got them. I haven't even opened the package yet. She's talking about, um, there's a channel called What the Hales. And they do Sunday night auctions. Now, don't you guys go out over there and uh, uh, bid me on stuff. <laughs> Always protect the eBay account. Yes, that is wise, wise advice. eBay is the site that you will get in the most trouble if you cancel orders. Yep, yep, yep. All right. We're going to keep it kind of short. I know, kind of short, an hour. That's not kind of short. I know sometimes I go for like two hours long. But um, as I mentioned uh, in the beginning, I got a lot going on here right now that um, I need to deal with. I got the cable guy coming over to try to fix my internet. Maybe that's why some of you are seeing blurry. Um, but it's, it's, yeah, my upload speeds have not been the greatest, which I'm paying for the greatest. So don't you hate that when you pay for something and they don't deliver? It's like, and then this hair, I got to go do something with this hair. <laughs> it's making me crazy. All right. Any last questions, you guys? Also, be sure if you haven't gotten your questions in for Joey, bada bing, 22, um, down in the community tab on my channel, there is a place for you to post your questions you want me to ask a real live mailman um, who is also an eBay seller, which makes it pretty cool. He, he understands from both sides. Ah, you pay attention to what I buy because I resell quickly. I try. I try to only buy stuff that I know is going to sell quickly. I actually, um, I, I, you guys know that you can always email me. If you watch a thrifting video and you see something, email me before I list it because I can give a better price than I can once it's listed and I have to pay fees. So perfectly okay to do that. Um, as If it's not on eBay first, you can sell it all you want. Once you have it listed on eBay, do not take a message from someone that says, hey, I'm local to you. Can we just make a deal or something? Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> Once it's on eBay, you have to honor the eBay platform and give them their commission. But if you sell it on another marketplace, I'll just address this because this question came in. But if you sell it on another marketplace, you can end your listing without any repercussions 
Um, just don't take messages having you sell it off of eBay. That will get you in trouble. I think I think I spelled that out clearly. But yes, you guys are always welcome. I put my email address in every single description so that if you do see something you can't live without, hit me up. We can make a deal. Thank you, guys. You have a great rest of your day, too. And let's make this an absolutely amazing first week of December. It's the first week of the last month of 2020. Hoorah. <laughs> let's get 2020 over with and on to great things. <laughs> And if you guys are not over in the Niche to Profit Facebook group, please come on over. That's where you can be supported in your, if you're new, if you're a seasoned seller, we have every level there and we problem solve, we share wins. And uh, of course we answer all those everyday things that you come up against in your business and get you through those hurdles. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate you. And uh, with that, go be profitable and make it fun. We'll see you on the next one.